in terms of that forecast and, and how we should be positioning ourselves as investors and those who are watching the program for actionable ideas from you today, you, you urged investors should start, quote, playing defense yeah. now. What does that right. mean? Well, I, what I said uh, in, in my September webcast for my total return fund, I said I think we've seen the low in the tenure for the year, and the tenure was about at 150 at the time, and that, that, was, that was the case. So you should be playing defense relative to interest rate risk because interest rates at the long end, the passive, path of least resistance, absent the Fed going into QE4 is for higher, I think, longer term interest rates. But when I'm talking about playing defense, what I'm really talking about is credit risk because credit risk to me right now is very dangerous. There's a whole cocktail of, of fundamentals that I think lead to wanting to be early on exiting the corporate bond market. Uh, and I think the time to be exiting the corporate bond market is presently because the corporate bond market is enormously bigger than it was prior to the global financial crisis. It was, it was around uh, you know, $5 trillion then, it's $11 trillion now. And the corporate bond market is, I believe, misrated. There's a study by Morgan Stanley Research that I've been referencing now for quite some time. They've been doing this for quite a few years that basically says, let's pretend that Morgan Stanley Research is a rating agency. And let's pretend that they're completely objective, but simplistic. So all they use is leverage ratios of, of corporations' debt in assessing what their rating should be. Morgan Stanley Research Department says that if you simply use leverage ratio, that 39%, fully, 39% of the investment grade corporate bond market should be rated junk right now. Imagine that. They're not rated junk right now because they're being a little bit lenient, I believe, relative to their downgrade system at the rating agencies. But if 39% of the corporate bond market would be downgraded to junk, you would see some pretty horrific movement. Against the backdrop of corporate debt to GDP being at an all-time high and the leverage ratios of net debt to EBITDA in both the investment grade and the junk bond market are at all-time record highs. So spreads are extremely narrow in, in corporate bonds. In fact, they're narrower than people think. People look at historical charts. They go back several decades and they say, how much extra yield do I get from investment grade corporate bonds versus treasuries? And the conclusion you, 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 you draw from that is it's kind of low by historical standards, so that raises a caution flag. However, the percentage of the investment grade corporate bond market that's rated single A or higher is at an all-time low. It used to be two-thirds of the corporate bond market was rated single A or higher 25 years ago. Now it's 35% of, of that market. So the rating is actually worse. So the yield spread should be higher than average, not at, at near a low level. So that's a, that's a very bad sign. Also, there's a yield grab that has gone on because of yield starvation in Japan and Europe primarily that has caused tremendous buying of U.S. assets, particularly corporate bonds, because there's a yield there. If you look at the net investment position of the United States, it's collapsed over the past several years with 49% of GDP value is actually is the net negative investment position of the United States. So this is all foreign investment that's come in. Foreigners, you can understand, are buying U.S. bonds because their bonds are negative. If you're an insurance company in Europe, what are you going to do? You can't buy bonds at negative 20 basis points. That's just, a, that's just a, a, a sure money loser. So what they're doing is buying U.S. assets, and that's helped the U.S. market. It's helped the U.S. corporate bond market. But the problem is that if you buy the corporate bonds as a European in, uh, insurance company, if you hedge the currency risk, back, so you buy the dollars and you hedge them back into euro, guess what happens? You have a negative yield. You have a yield that's even more negative than the German 10-year bund. So you can't hedge it. So what's been happening is European investors, insurance companies and the like, have been buying U.S. corporate bonds and not hedging them. And that's one of the reasons the dollar has held up, because they're not hedging it back. So there's incremental dollar demand. The dollar has been stable for sure this year. The Dixie Index started the year at 96 and a quarter. I didn't look at it today, but it was at 97 and a half or so yesterday. So it's basically unchanged. But the dollar should be falling based on two things. The first is when the Fed is easing, it's highly correlated to dollar weakness because, of course, the interest rate is less attractive. Also, when the twin deficits, the budget deficit and the trade deficit, are rising as a percentage of GDP, which has happened for sure in the last few years, it's highly correlated to dollar weakness. The dollar has held up because of this naked buying 
by foreign investors who are yield starved thanks to the negative interest rate policy. What you have to think about is what happens if the dollar actually starts weakening and or corporate bond prices start, start dropping, you're going to see a huge loss start to develop in these naked dollar holdings for these entities. And my belief, based upon 35 years of experience and how investors behave when they start to experience losses, is they will then start to have waves of selling. They run and so for I the exits. Right. And so this is why I think you're supposed to be playing defense. I believe this is almost like 2006 relative to some of the over leverage in some of the, you know, the sieves and all that stuff that went on that caused the global financial crisis. It really doesn't matter if the problem happens today or a year from now. You're picking up a tiny amount of money in excess yield, and yet the downside flush will be such that you will see tremendous losses accruing. And I think that's the fundamental risk that faces investors, and, that, uh, and, and it, it's all happened because of the cumulative effect of this now not short-term negative interest rate policy.